Um, you know, first, uh, um, you know, want to uh, just really uh, incredibly impress our guys uh, to come out for, you know, uh, 40 minutes and I thought play with a level of uh, intensity, the way we guarded them. I uh, thought we really made things difficult. Uh, our guys were in tune. Uh, we talked about from a game plan standpoint, um, you know, what we wanted to do coming in. Um, but, you know, as, as we talk about the time, you know, um, coaches can only lose games. You know, we can do the, do, you know, make wrong adjustments, um, not have the right game plan, whatever the case may be. Players got to go out and do it in between the lines. And our guys were, I thought, took the game plan, went out and were terrific. The urgency, the way they guarded, the way they were able to cover for each other. Um, you know, we made things very hard on them. Uh, they've got a really good team, uh, you know, as, as they've shown here early in the season. Thought we made uh, things hard on Xavier uh, Johnson, who's one, one of the best players in the league, uh, leads the league in scoring. Trent Brown leads the country in three-point percentage. We're able to keep him off the three-point line. I thought, again, our detail, our attention to detail, scouting report and everything else, uh, you know, was, was, was really good. And, and offensively, you know, we, we had to, you know, take what, what they were, you know, willing to give us. Uh, and they play a unique style defensively, not a lot of help. Uh, you got to be able to make, you know, some plays, get downhill, be in attack mode and, and, and finish through contact. I thought our guys did a great job of that. Um, and we knew going in, I mean, um, you know, missing one of our best players uh, and Ryan and uh, certainly our guys, um, you know, coming into it, uh, um, you know, all, all thinking of him and his family. So um, we're, uh, we're we're locked in. I, I thought it was a, it was a, it was a great performance, uh, really for the entire forty minutes. Our most complete by far of the year. Questions, please, coach. You look at um, your guys' defensive effort, which you just touched on. <clears throat> they didn't get a assist till less than twelve minutes left in the game. Finished with two. It looked like, like you said, the perimeter defense of Swope and Larry really came out and shut them down. You guys are switching. They're keeping with them, staying staying in front of them. What can you say just the defense and like what kind of statement or just what kind of showing you guys had in the opener here defensively? Well, I think, you know, uh, you're right on. I mean, I think, you know, obviously part of our defensive plan is always to try to limit assists. Um, you know, we really want to be, uh, you know, that, that's something, you know, we, we talk about the way we play defense, uh, the ball pressure, uh, the switching. Um, we're certainly trying to, to not allow guys to operate and run offense comfortably. Uh, we want to be aggressive. We want to play with a presence on the ball. We certainly want to, you know, make things as difficult as we can. And, you know, went in the game with, uh, knew what we were going to switch, what we weren't going to switch. And that's, you know, typical. I think, you know, there's a lot, that, you know, narrative is always, you know, well, well, they don't guard, they don't guard, they don't play defense, they don't care about defense. And it's, you know, it's kind of a lazy, uneducated, uh, you know, narrative because I think anybody that is around us knows, you know, how, how committed we are on that end of the floor. Um, I think our defensive numbers I think we've played much better defense, and the defensive numbers would would indicate, um, you know, Pepperdine and, and some of those teams just the shot making. I thought second half against Rice, lead got big. You know, we kind of relaxed. IUPUI at 36 with six and a half minutes to go, and and you know we subbed, and they wound up scoring 21 points, last 14 possessions tonight. You know, but but um, but our defense has been much better than what the numbers indicate, and I think our guys. We got a lot of guys. Uh, I mean, Isaiah Swope is one that, you know, everybody talks about his scoring, but. I mean, he's been elite defensively. How hard he's playing on that end of the floor, end of the ball. He leads us in steals, leads the league in steals, deflections, hands on the ball. Julian Larry, I think for the last three years, has been as good a perimeter defender as there's in the league. I think he's the best. Um, and I thought our other guys, Jason Ken's versatility at 6'9", be able to guard you know, four or five spots. Jabo has been much better on that end. So um, it was great to kind of see it come together. Uh, and I thought we made everything hard on them. I didn't think there was much. Uh, easy for them tonight, and and when you do that, uh, it, it's kind of you know when they did get a, a clean look, I think you know they almost they missed a couple of the clean looks just because I think it was an accumulation of having to work so hard for every shot. When you do finally get an open one, you know you rush it, force it, and, and miss it. So they didn't have very many clean ones, but the ones they did, uh, they weren't able to convert. And then the last game in Vegas, you had a of not playing defense. Sure. Okay. You heard about the chirping about not playing defense a little bit. When you turn in a defensive performance like this tonight, not just you, I mean the guys, I mean, how much do you not, I mean, pound your chest that, hey, look what we can, can do. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I, you know, even last year, I mean, we were going in the Belmont game, which was the second to last regular season game of the year last year, we were second in the Valley in, in defensive efficiency. I think people look at, at points per game and they, and they just say, well, you know, this team's giving up 62 points a game, they're a great team, this team gives up 72 points a game, they're a bad defense, but 
really the only stat that matters defensively is, is your efficiency rating, right? Like points per 100 possessions. And last year, I thought we were a really good defensive team. I think we're a better defensive team this year. I really do. I think we're a better, I think we're more dynamic on that side of the ball. Um, you know, uh, obviously Ryan wasn't here tonight, but Ryan's a terrific defender. Uh, Swope and Jew give us great speed and quickness on the perimeter. Um, you know, and, and honestly, uh, you know, uh, they, they most of their points tonight came on the interior. Rupert, you know, we got to do a better job there. Robbie's got to be, you know, we told him he's got to be better uh, on on that end for us, anchor us there. But our defense, in terms of you know that that narrative, um, you know, there's just no empirical evidence to, to to back it up. It's just a lazy narrative, uneducated narrative based on, like I said, oh, well, they gave up you know 72 points this game or 70 points. Well, if there's 80 possessions, you know, that's pretty good defense. Uh, tonight was a lower possession game, but I thought we were we were terrific. Took them off the the three point line. They made you know three threes all night. They were making you know around ten a game, and then they were second to us in assists and and held them to two assists. And even last year, we've been one of the best teams in the country at preventing assists, which again goes back to trying to make people make individual plays, def- uh, you know, on the offensive end and taking away their ability to move the ball freely. And we did that last year, and we've done it at a really high level so far this year. You always talk about you wish you could give the guys the minutes they deserve it and want. Xavier gets. Extra minutes tonight. I know you wish it was under better circumstance, but takes full advantage of it. How happy are you to see the, the game he turns in? I'm thrilled. I mean, I, I mentioned out there on the radio, like, you know, there, there was a lot of talk about, you know, I didn't, I didn't play, um, I didn't sub in the second half against Toledo. Right, and I played the, the the starting five the whole second half, so so Xavier didn't get in um, uh, with the other guys. Um, and you know, I said out there like. Every game I'm coaching, I'm coaching with that game. I could give a, you know, what less about what's happening a month from now or a week from now or five games from now. Like, I'm coaching to do what I think gives us the best chance to win that game. So Xavier, if you look at him, he goes from making really game point shot against Pepperdine, that wing three that put us up eight, that kind of closed Pepperdine out, to not touching the floor in the second half against Lito Swope didn't touch the floor. Last 10 minutes, nine game, you know, really two massive threes, including game point shot against Toledo. It's game to game, but but the thing about Jabo that I love is he never once complained, never once said, man, why'd you not play me? He was up coaching and involved, and his, his emotional investment in the team is not dependent on his playing time. And he was fantastic tonight. And we know how good he is. Games are going to provide different things. Guys are going to this and that. Not everybody has every night, but to see him come out after not getting a chance to play the second half against Toledo, to get 17, to get four assists, no turnovers, big shots. I thought he played an unbelievably clean game, and I thought his defense was terrific. I really thought he was, you know, we switched there in the second half, and he took on Rupert, and we put Robbie over on one of the guards, and Jabo did a great, that, that really stemmed their tide in terms of inside. His post defense and his perimeter defense was was outstanding, and it couldn't happen to a better human, man. He's he's he's, he's, he's been with him six years now. Uh, he's like a son to me. It was it was uh, I, you know it just warms my heart to see him go out and play and have a game like that. And and, and I figured he was going to be great. Obviously, you know, hate the circumstances with Ryan. We knew coming in, but we knew he had to be great, and he was fantastic for us. Any other questions for coach? Yeah, coach. I mean, just obviously, you know, we want to know if Valley play. You know, what does this do for your confidence? You know, you got a big game this weekend against Bradley, but come out with that performance on both ends of the floor, you know, contributions across the board. I know you guys got to be feeling good. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, it, it's it's a long season. Uh, you're going to have ebbs and flows. You're going to have, uh, you know, um, you know, hopefully hopefully good results. Uh, it's not always going to go your way. I think the biggest thing, is, you know, is you, you take the lessons from each game, you know, and I think there there's a lot to be learned from this game. I think we did a lot of things really well. As I said, I think our, our most complete performance, when you look at offense, defense uh, of the year, we were able to, to, to really put it together on both ends of the floor, um, and we're going to have to continue to improve and get better. It doesn't get any easier. You know, we played a, uh, a one-loss team tonight in Southern Illinois. Uh, we go and uh, play it right now an unbeaten team in Bradley. Um, that's that's you know been in my estimation probably in the non-conference the uh, the, the most impressive team so far. And then we go to a one-loss Southern Illinois uh, Northern Illinois team. So um, it's it, it it gets no easier. But I think this weekend, you know, like I told the guys in there, um, you know, if if you know, if, if you're a competitor, you want to take on the biggest challenges. You want to, you know, compete and challenge yourself against the very best teams, very best coaches. Um, we're going to get to do that this weekend against Bradley. And I know our guys are incredibly excited about the opportunity. We know how good they are. We got incredible deep respect for uh, Brian, uh, their program, their players. They're the champs. Um, they're undefeated. Uh, Carver's as hard a place there is in the league to play. 
Uh, but if you're a competitor, it doesn't get any better than that. I know our guys will be ready to go on Saturday. In Vegas, your five starters played the full 20 minutes in the second half against Toledo. Tonight, again, pretty heavy minutes from your five starters. What can you say about maybe what's pulling you that way? I know you said on the radio like it wasn't like you planned it. It's not a style mm -hmm. that you do. But what can you say of what's kind of uh, kind of the catalyst and why that's happening right now a little bit? I think that a mistake that a lot of coaches make is they play too many players. I think that is a, a debilitating thing for a lot of coaches. They play way too many guys. To me, um, your normal rotation is going to be seven, eight guys. You know, um, I don't think it makes any sense to play beyond that unless guys have earned it or there's not a gap. The guys who are playing, um, you know, tonight, I mean, Robbie got 22 minutes, Jabo 27, uh, Julian 32, Isaiah 36, Jason 31. And then our bench, you know, really was was Jake and 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 Mason and Derek, and they basically, you know, got 17, 12, and and eight. Um, you know, I, I don't look at that in any negative way. Um, I, I think you have to play your best players um, to win. Um, our season's not like an NBA season where it's 82 games, and you know, um, I, I think you know you're in a 31 game regular. That's what we're guaranteed is 31 regular season games and a conference tournament game. Um, you're trying to win every single one. And the best way to win is to play your best players as much as possible. Now, within reason, um, within reason, my first year here, uh, for those of you that were here, we played our guys 40 minutes a game, every game. Cooper Nice averaged, I think, 36 minutes. Julian averaged 35 minutes. Uh, these guys, you know, it's not ideal, and they're not going to average that this year. But if you look at our league, I don't think we have anybody uh, in the top 15 in minutes played. Uh, per game. I don't think we don't have anybody. Bradley has three or four guys in the top 15. Um, and so it, it's a fair question for sure. Um, but I would say that that's a mistake a lot of coaches make is, you know, we're going to play 10, 11 guys and we're going to play our best players 26 minutes as opposed to 33, 34 minutes. I just, I, do, I just, I guess I, uh, I just disagree with it uh, from, a, from a standpoint of, I don't think that's the best way to, to, to give yourself the best chance to win. And my job uh, in my chair is to give our team the best chance to win, whether that's game plan, who I play, whatever we do. So um, hopefully it'll be. I don't. It's not that I don't have confidence those guys when we're when we're health. When you know when obviously we expect Ryan back uh, here and he'll be ready to go Saturday. Um, but our, our bench main bench guys, Jabo, Jake, you know Mason, Derek, those guys are going to play. They're going to contribute, and it's always all hands on deck because as we've seen, stuff happens. Been without Robbie, been without Ryan. There'll be more stuff that happens throughout the year. We're going to need guys, foul trouble, et cetera, to step in, play significant minutes, and it's all hands on deck to win games. I have a ton of confidence in our bench in all those guys, and they've all already contributed. Uh, obviously, saw Mace out in Vegas. Jake, I mean, all those guys. Derek against, against Alabama, they're, they're fine. They're going to help us win games, and, and I have all the confidence in the world in those guys. So Julian mentioned Ryan, and you just said again, it, what, what's, why was he out today? He was at a funeral. Ryan had a, a, a loved one uh, that passed um, when we were in Vegas. Um, they passed on Tuesday, and there was a big question as if he was going to play um, the rest of Vegas. Um, he and his family decided that they were going to play uh, Wednesday and Friday. Uh, he flew back. Um, they had a family deal yesterday. The funeral was today. Um, you know, the, the conference opener here in, in Terre Haute is really important. Uh, pales in comparison to uh, the loss of a loved one, um, him being there for his family. It was, it was never even a, a question uh, for us, you know, if he was going to be here tonight. He was going to be with his family, spend that, um, and he'll be back on campus uh, tomorrow and ready to go uh, for practice Thursday and Bradley on Saturday. My last question was going to be about the league. It seems like the RPI, right, the, the Kempom, whatever you want to call it, all mm -hmm. the rankings, everything's up. A lot of wins, yep. some signature wins over top 100, you know, Ken Palm teams. What can you say about the Valley and how it feels early on, uh, kind of the league's doing uh, compared to recent years? Well, I think, you know, Mike sends out something, and, and uh, I believe uh, this is the best non-conference record. It's like 50-some and 20-some uh, since 1964-65. So that gives you context. I mean, this is the best the Valley in terms of non-conference record going back to the 1960s. Um, the league is amazing. It's, it's going to be uh, unbelievably tough. Um, every year uh, it's a heavyweight fight, but I don't know uh, when you look at, at the league top to bottom. Um, that result tonight here will be an anomaly. Most games are going to be, you know, tooth and nail, decide in the last three minutes of a game. There'll be, you know, moments of truth down the stretch. And it's going to be unbelievably fun for the fans, for the media, 
Um, as a competitor, I love it. As a coach, I hate it um, because it's it's just it's just every night is a heavyweight fight, and um, I think the league is. I've only been in it three years. But it says it's it's the best it's been in my three years in it, and uh, expect uh, you know 20, 19 more of these coming up, and obviously uh, you know starting here on Saturday.